Today, we're going to cover the six-figure daily workflow that will help you hit anywhere between 10 to 15K a month, as I've seen that many coaches have problems with structuring their time. Most of them know what they have to do, but they don't do the work. Sometimes it's because we have some sort of resistance that we face, or the other times because we don't know how to structure our time the correct way. And this is what this mini masterclass is going to help you with. So the first thing that we're going to uh, cover and tell you is that this is, you know, just a high level overview of how to prior prioritize your tasks. Like that's the most important thing you will learn here is prioritization. I will show you how to focus on the key actions that actually moves the needle in your business. Because right now it is super, super easy to get overwhelmed with the whole training we have inside the program. And following this daily action plan can help you stay on track, move forward in the direction that you want and get the results that you want. But of course, before we cover this, uh, I want to uh, just touch on this foundational principles that are really, really good uh, to know before we cover the nitty gritty stuff. The first thing that I want to tell you when it comes to time management, to productivity, is to never ever plan your days, weeks, too far in advance, in future. Because when you do this, you probably have done this and you notice that this can trigger some sort of anxiety, stress, and overwhelm. So the best advice I can give you is just plan the day before. That's it. You don't need to plan your whole week. Yes. You can have a structure, but there is no need to plan your whole week, exactly what you're going to do, like too far in advance, because everything triggers anxiety when you do it like this. My recommendation, and as I gave you this plan uh, in school, like this document that you probably are seeing, is whenever you finish your like work day, plan your next day afterwards, because you know what you have to do best. And that's how it looks like. Like I have it mine on my desktop all the time. I have my plan exactly. My day is written out and I know what I'm going to be doing. But the principle here that I want you to remember is to never plan your days too far in advance. The next foundational principle that is super important is to take it one day at a time and focus on what can get done today. That's it. You always want to focus on progress not perfection, because we tend to get caught in this perfectionism. We always try to make everything perfect, do this uh, quote-unquote homework perfectly, uh, send this perfect message, do this perfect sales call. There is no such a thing as perfect. Just remove it, I would say, from your vocabulary and focus only on progress. Allow yourself to make mistakes and just make sure to progress in the right direction. Like... I'll share with you this strange experiment so you can really understand what do I mean here. Like this experiment was uh, done like in a period of one semester in university, if I'm not mistaken. But the professor, uh, one professor assigned uh, to uh, his students some sort of uh, homework and he divided them into groups. The first group, uh, he told the first group just to try to do this assignment perfectly. They have the whole semester, they only have one try, do it perfectly. And to the second group, he told them, do as many assignments as you want. You are allowed to do one, 10, 100, whatever you want. And at the end of the semester, the results were kind of strange, maybe strange. But what this professor discovered is that in the second group, like people who were allowed to do more tries, they end up with better assignments, better homeworks. Even their, for example, let's say they made 10 copies, uh, 10 assignments, like from sixth to 10th assignment, they were better than the one, this, per, the perfect piece that the other group made. So what I'm trying to make, to say here is that when you focus on the progression, you actually become better, quote unquote, perfect. And the same thing is here with the business, with productivity. Take it one day at a time and focus on what you get done today. And this is kind of related to the first principle, to, don't, to not plan your days or weeks too far in advance. The third thing 
Uh, the third foundational principle is that you can never enter the focus zone if you never step out of it. That's a really, really important lesson that I had to learn the hard way. But advice that the single best piece of advice I can give you is take at least at least one day in your week completely off to recharge. Don't try to work 24 seven, seven days um, in the week, like 30, 365 days of the year. It's impossible. Yes, you can do it, but you won't get the results as if you take some rest. The best advice I can give you is to treat your brain as a supercomputer. The brain needs to be recharged. The brain needs to be cleaned the same as the supercomputer. And the best advice I can give you is just to take at least one day completely off to recharge and focus on yourself because it's not about working only. For me, this is Sunday. For you, it can be whatever you want, but choose one day of a week and focus on recharging so you can get better the next uh, time you start working again. And if you can also set expectations to your clients, to your prospects, that you're just not available on that day. Hey, this is my day. I will do whatever I want. I will take care of myself, spend time with family, whatever. But I will not work on the business because I need to recharge so I can be more productive. Because if you work seven days out of in the week, this might lead to burnout because some people cannot tolerate that much stress. And these are like some foundational principles that I wanted to cover before we, you know, go to the needy greedy stuff. But this is a super important thing. If you have done all the things on this list that I just told you, but you didn't get results today, like in, uh, later on, I will show you a list of the activities that you have to do on a daily basis uh, so you can move the needle in your business. But I just want to set this super, super realistic expectations from the very beginning that if you do all of the things and you don't get results, for example, you don't book calls today, you don't close any calls, this is normal. This is normal and you still had made a good day because you made progress. As I told you previously, we focus on progress, not perfection. So don't get discouraged, especially in the beginning. Like I want to highlight this, especially in the beginning. As long as you're consistent, you put in daily action, the results will come. I always love saying this quote from Alice Homozy, the only way to fail is if you quit. And if you don't quit, you will never fail. The same thing is here. Just don't quit. Do the work consistently, and I would say the compounding effect will play a role because the messages that you send today, the content that you upload today will result in future clients in one week, in one month, in one year, in 10 years. But all of the actions that you put today, they have compounding effect in the future. So what we will follow like, what is the system that we follow? Yo, because you're on this program, you already know that the system we follow is the client attraction system. And as I told you from the very beginning, this mini masterclass will help you with time management, but most importantly, prioritization. And before I explain you how we should prioritize, I want to cover like the three main segments the business has. Those segments are lead generation, which is getting attention and creating content. Uh, the second segment is appointment setting, where we are converting this attention into booked phone calls by simply messaging people. And of course, the last one is closing. We are enrolling qualified prospect into our program. These are like the three main segments of the strategy that we follow when it comes to attracting clients organically. And anything other than the above, it is simply a distraction. We only need to focus on these things. That's it. And focus, do you know what focus stands for? Focus stands for follow one course until successful. And that's what we do here. We focus on these things only. Anything else is distraction and we just execute. Like you probably already know this graph with these two circles. You can, for example, look at my camera. Let's say you're focused on 10 things and your focus is spread on these 10 things and you're, I would say, mediocre in all of them. But if this is again your focus and you have only one singular focus, it looks like this. And that's what we try to accomplish here. We want to minimize all of the distractions so you don't even think about them. You just do the work, it's super easy for you and you are not overwhelmed when it comes to doing the work. And I would say there is no chronological order in the workflow that I'm about to show you. The most important thing 
I want to highlight this is daily execution. As long as you are executing, you're making progress. So as you remember, we had three segments that we will cover attention, content, and sales. For the attention, the tasks we have are two. And I just covered one of the tasks here. The task is basically adding people as Facebook friends. The reason why we do this, because when we use, for example, Facebook as our main uh, vehicle for organic marketing, we have to focus on getting new eyeballs that come to your profile so people can discover you, see who you are as a coach. The first way is basically by adding people manually. Of course, the cons of this strategy is that we add people manually, but the pros of this strategy is that we are super, super targeted on our audience. And of course, we only focus on our ideal clients. And a small disclaimer I want to make, the number that you see here, it is just for orientation. For everyone, this number will be different. Depends on how warmed up your Facebook profile is. And of course, depends on the time you have. But of course, you want to find what actually works for you. And when it comes to adding people, I observed that it takes about 60 minutes on average. Of course, it can be less, it can be more, but this is just average. And we always look at the worst case scenario so you can even make more progress. And the way you can do this is by going to Facebook groups that are full of UDN clients, go to the members section, and you can add people that are in the section members with things in common or newest member, because you will know that this are actually uh, active profile. And you can also, when adding people, you can engage with them to ensure that they will add you back and they will notice you. How? Just leave free lives on their, um, of course, content. And the second way that we get attention on Facebook is simply by making posts in other people Facebook groups. Like this strategy, has this exponential results and it has more leverage because with one piece of content, you can reach out to five, 10, 100, 1000 people. So these are, I would say the two tasks we have when it comes to generating attention using uh, Facebook as our main traffic source. For Instagram, the strategies are the IG social sniper strategy plus reels. But of course, in the program, it is shown how exactly to do them. And for those of you who haven't gone through the Better Plan Co yet, don't worry. On the Better Plan Co, you'll get more clarity on this stuff that we're just talking about. But now I want to first make you aware of the tasks we have. And at the end, I will show you example of workflow on how you can potentially structure your time so you can actually execute these tasks and progress. So the second segment of the business is content. With content, what tasks we have, they're basically two. The first task is to create and post daily content on your Facebook. If you use Instagram, of course, Instagram as well. And again, what I have observed after helping more than 100 people so far is that it takes about 30 minutes to create the content, around 10 minutes to edit, and then you just need to post on your Facebook and so on. And on top of that, if you want, you can spend 30 minutes dedicated to respond to comments by, uh, you know, hearting this comment, uh, these comments, you can also reply to them so you can boost the algorithm and more people can discover you. But again, in the program, everything is made super easy for you because you have content calendars. You can just follow them and 30 to 40 minutes is what will take you to create content. This is like feed content. And on top of that, the other task you basically have is to create daily stories. Again, in your Facebook profile and Instagram, if you use them, and my recommendation is to add call to action to your offer because stories are super powerful and many people neglect them and they don't take advantage of that. The main idea I want you to understand from these two tasks we have when it comes to the content segment of the business is consistency and daily upload. Why we do that is because we want to be consistently seen by our audience. The more they see us, the more familiar they get with us. And of course, the more familiar they are, the more they trust us. Therefore, the easier the sales process is. That's why we do this. Because we want to make the whole sales process easier. Like after enough exposure to you and your content, your prospect slash audience will start thinking, hmm, I kind of like this person because they're familiar with you. 
The same thing is with the Stockholm syndrome. And for those of you who don't know about it, I'm always repeating this, but I hopefully I hope you understand it because it applies very well to business. Stockholm syndrome is this super strange uh, psychological phenomenon where people who got kidnapped and stayed with their kidnappers for six plus months were rescued. And after being rescued just a few weeks after that, all of them wanted to come back to their kidnappers. That's super strange. Why it happened? Because they got familiar with the kidnapper. This was the only person who they were exposed to and they like it. The same principle is here with the content. When people see you daily, they're exposed to you daily, they get familiar with you, and they trust you. So that's the main principle when it comes to content creation. And of course, the last segment of the business is sales. I would say 80% of your time should go here. I want to emphasize on this because a business without sales is a time-wasting hobby. And of course, we don't want to waste our time. We're here to help people and make money. That's why most of our time, energy, and effort should go on sales. And when I say sales, I mean appointment setting, which is messenger DMs. You're reaching out to people, chatting with people who are interested in your services, and you're trying to book them for a call. And of course, when you have sales goals, your task is to take this sales goals. But this is, I would say, a high-level overview of the tasks uh, we have in this business to make it successful. Again, I want to repeat, for those of you who haven't went for the Battle Plan Co, you'll get more and more clarity on there. And of course, once you start taking action. But the idea of this masterclass is to show you how to prioritize and how to structure your time. And I'll give you two examples right now. If you work full-time in your business, how you can potentially structure your time. And if you have a job, how you can also do that. Or if you are at school. But again, I want to make this disclaimer in the beginning. These are just examples. This is what I've seen works. Of course, you can modify because everyone is different. We are different. We have different lifestyle, different priorities. So the whole idea is just to follow the framework. And then based on that, you can adjust and adapt to your um, own lifestyle. But let's say you work full time. Uh, you wake up around 6, 7 or maybe 8 a.m. So the first thing that you can do, of course, to wake up, hygiene, hydrate yourself. Then my recommendation always, uh, just for the morning routine to be super simple and effective, is to do some sort of, let's say, physical activity. This can be cardio, yoga, stretching. Just move yourself so the, uh, so you can wake up, so the blood can start flowing and you can be alert and ready to work. There is no need to overcomplicate your morning routine. That's what I used to do. When I started, my morning routine was two, three hours long. Like I woke up, then I, I was reading, then I did some meditation, then I did the coach hour, then I did a workout too much just so I can get ready to work. Instead, just do something simple and do the work. Why? Because the work is the most important thing right now that moves the needle in our business. And the first thing that you can do when you start working is you can create and post content. I would say it takes about one and a half hour max. This is again, worst case scenario to come up with the idea, to write the content, to edit and publish. But again, I want to remind you that in the program, Module 3, we have uh, engagement sequences, content calendars that you can follow, which simplify the whole process. But the first thing you can do uh, when you start working is just create and post content one and a half hour max. Then let's say at 11 a.m., uh, you will go through your messenger inbox. So what you're going to do here, you clean your inbox which means you reply to all of the past conversation you had. Maybe you reach out to some people, but I would say for one, one and a half hours, you can just focus on sales and messaging people. Then you can have a lunch break, uh, prepare lunch, eat. You can come back and post <clears throat> stories on Facebook and Instagram. Um, this is like what you can do eventually, but if you want to, you can combine this task, like right here, posting stories with... Uh, the task of creating and posting content in your um, personal profile. Then, as you can see, the example of the schedule, again, I want to emphasize, this is just an example, from 1 to 7 p.m., what is the focus? The focus is on sales only, which means you focus on booking calls, taking calls, You're, you can also potentially add people. But this is, you know, just a vague example that 
I hope we help you understand that sales is the most important thing. And when we just um, see how much time we spend on total in each task, you can see that majority of the time is spent on sales. Then at 7 p.m. you can have dinner. Then you can decide on some content ideas the next day if you want and do some messenger just to, before you log off. Then at 9 to 10 p.m. you can just reflect, relax, spend time with family. Then you can go to bed and wake up. Again, I just want to say this is just an example you can modify. To be honest with you, this is not like the routine I follow. Mine is quite different and simpler and I will share it with you share with you my routine at the end. But again, I want to show you one more example for the people who are working jobs or maybe they are going to school or they have some other uh, things that they have to take care of. And this is the part-time example if you're in school or if you work job. Then um, again, this morning routine is super simple. The time is adjustable. You just wake up, you hygiene, you do some sort of uh, mobility movement just to wake up. Then what you do from for one, one and a half hours, you go to your messenger inbox, clear the inbox, reach out to people, and then you can create some content and post it. You can create some stories and post it. Then you can go do your full-time job. Of course, here I add time to commute to your job, to come back, lunch and everything else. Then when you come back, you have dinner. And from again, from 7 to 10 p.m., which is around three hours, you again focus on sales, messenger, booking sales calls, and maybe adding people as Facebook friends. And that's it. Like the routines and why I showed you these routines is because I wanted to emphasize again and just give this friendly reminder whenever you structure your time. Try to spend majority of your time onto sales. And when I say sales, this is messaging people. And of course, taking sales calls. Now that you have these two examples, of course, they are just examples. You can take some ideas. You can remove some things according to you and your lifestyle. And you can use them just as a guideline that will help you with structuring your time. And as I promised to you, I'll just quickly share with you my routine. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll just walk you through it. Like what I do personally, I wake up at 6 a.m. My morning routine is that simple that as I just show here, I just wake up, hydrate, uh, hygiene, and I do some sort of movement. Usually this is a 10 minutes stretching. It takes me about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I jump straight into work. The first thing that I do is I do sales because I actually prioritize sales first. Therefore, I do the hardest task for me. And I assume this is also the hardest task for all of us. Sales, I try to eat the frog, quote unquote, the first thing in the morning. Because if I leave sales for the end of the day, I know myself. I will not do it. I'll get lazy. I will procrastinate. I'll come up with lots of excuses. So the first thing I try to tackle is sales. I would just clear my inbox. I would do my reach outs and I would do my uh, follow-ups. For me, it takes me about three, three and a half hours to do this because I do around 100 reach outs. Then when I'm done with this, I go to the gym for one, one and a half hours. I come back, take a shower. I have lunch or maybe breakfast because I'm breaking my fast as I'm not eating the first thing in the morning. Then uh, it's around 12 like noon when I finish this and from noon uh, to maybe 5, 6, sometimes 7 p.m. Again, it all depends on my day, what I have to do. I will just do some business work. This can be creating content. This can be recording videos, recording modules. I can take some sales calls if I have to. I can do some of the traffic sequence, but this is basically the time block that I have, like from 12 to 5, 6 or 7 but they, most of the time it's six, to be honest with you. This is blocked only for work. And again, these are tasks like content creation. This can be a uh, traffic side of the business. This can be creating some sort of content and so on and so on. Again, it all depends on quote unquote, what sort of season I am. Like there are some seasons where I only focus on improving the program. There are some seasons where I focus on just preparing materials, content, and again, it all depends. Then when I finish work, I'll have my dinner. Then I'll go for a walk. Then I'll have leisure time. I'll spend time with family. I'll read. And that's it. The routine is super simple, but I hope you noticed a few things from my routine. And maybe you can 
get some ideas out of it and implement it in your own routine. The idea is simplicity in the morning routine. You don't need three hours long morning routine. You just need to wake up and do the work because this is, the, of course, super important thing. Then the next thing that you probably noticed is that uh, I spent majority of my time doing uh, sales, which is, of course, the most important activity for our business. The third thing that uh, you probably noticed is that I don't work all day. This is not good for any of us. We cannot tolerate this. It is kind of hard, I would say. I have a hard stop. And when this time comes, I just don't work. I do whatever I want. And these are a few things I just wanted to point out. These are basically, this is everything when it comes to time management. This is everything that you need to hit 10, 15K or even more with your business. But the most important thing is putting what you learned today into action and do the tasks that you are supposed to do to move the needle in your business.